Hey everyone, in this video I'll show you how to make your player or your character in your platformer game fall down. So remember that in a platformer game, if our character is not touching or walking on platforms, they need to fall down. And if they fall off the edge of the screen, they need to die. So basically what I've set up here is just a world with a platform here. This platform is made of tiles from my platform class. You can see they're all just individual tiles. My platform class is empty. There's no code in it. It's just called platform. And then my character or my player is called player right here. And this class, I haven't started any code in here either. We're going to put all of the code in the player class. And because we're going to do that, we want to stay organized. So the strategy I'm going to use to stay organized in this um, class is instead of writing a lot of code in the act method, I'm going to write a lot of small little methods outside of the act method and call them in the act method in an attempt to stay organized. So let's get started. To make our player fall, we need to keep track of how fast our player is moving vertically or if he has any speed going up and down. So up top here, I'm just going to go a public integer called vSpeed. Um, he doesn't have any speed to start out, so we're not going to make this equal anything when we initialize it. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create a public integer called gravity. And this needs to be a positive number so that gravity pulls him down. Um, we're going to make a small number like 2 for right now. Now, we're not going to do a lot of coding in the act, but we want to make some methods between the act and the end of the class. So I'm going to put my mouse after the act method and create some space here. Make sure you don't lose this curly brace here. And I'm going to start by just making a method that makes my character fall. So I'm going to write public void fall. This method's return type is a void, which means it doesn't return anything. So all we have to do here is just write some code to make our player fall. So to make our player fall, we can pretty much use set location. And what we want to do here is think about how he falls. When he falls, he's not really moving left or right. So we're going to just say get x. Get the player's x coordinate and it'll be the same. For making them fall, we're going to actually get the player's y coordinate. But then we need to change it. And so we want them to move down. So we should add vertical speed to our player. Now this alone won't make our player fall because vertical speed is nothing right now. So after this, what I like to do is I like to say that if we're falling, our vertical speed is going to equal gravity. And so if we're falling, the vertical speed will change to two and our two will get added to his Y coordinate and that will actually make our player fall. So let's call that in the act method just to check it, just to make sure it works. So let's press compile. And if we put a player on the screen, he should fall down. And you can see my player is falling down, not very fast, and he actually passes right through the ground. And that's okay, because right now we haven't really wrote a way to see should we stop when we hit the ground. So let's add that next. So back to the player class. And now again, um, I'm going to take fall out of the act, and I'm going to write another method that's going to help me here. This time, let's write a method called a public boolean. Let's call this one on ground. Now, this kind of method, its return type is a boolean, which means when the method is finished running, it either has to return true or it has to return false. I like to think of these as questions. Am I on the ground? The answer has to be a boolean. So the first thing we're going to do in this method is actually measure how tall our character is. So we're going to write an int. And let's call this sprite height. In 2D games, graphics are called sprites. And so we want to measure the sprite that we're using as our character. So we're going to say get image dot get height. Now we do this in the method because if we're animating our, our sprite we're using at the moment when he hits the ground might be a different size. And so this creates um, a pretty flexible program where if you have different size sprites or if you have different size graphics or one image is bigger, um, it doesn't break your program. It's actually super flexible. The next thing we're going to do is tell the computer how far below the character's feet 
um, we should start looking for ground. So let's create an integer there called look for ground. And that's going to equal the sprite height divided by 2. And so just for a second here, let's talk about what we need to do here. Let's compile this. And I can't, um, can't run this because I haven't finished this method. So I'm just going to quickly comment this out here and just explain kind of the math behind this. So if we put a player on the screen, and let's put them right here. Basically, what we want to do here is Greenfoot measures the player or the actor where he is on the screen right in the middle of the graphic. So this is actually a square graphic here like this. And Greenfoot is measuring it right from the middle. We want to tell Greenfoot to look for ground from the middle halfway down right here. And if you think about x and y coordinates, that is the y coordinate right there. If we wanted to look left or right, that would be this way. That would be the x coordinate. And so basically, we're only going to be using the y offset here or the y distance to figure out if we're touching the ground. So that's kind of what kind of math problem we kind of need to solve here to make sure or to see if our player is touching the ground. So we'll go back to the player class. I'm going to uncomment this. And now basically we're going to use um, kind of like intersection to kind of figure out how this works. We're going to use and we're going to create an actor called ground. And instead of one intersecting object, let's use the method get one object at offset. And this method actually needs three parameters or three pieces of information to work. And so the first one is how far left or right in the x direction should we be looking for ground? And we're not looking left or right. We're going to be looking down. So our first parameter should be 0. The second parameter is how far in the y direction should we be looking for ground? And we created that math or that number right here. So look for ground will be our second parameter. Our third parameter is what class we should be looking for. And the name of my ground is from the platform class. So we put that in there. So this is actually going to be looking for ground from the middle of our sprite down by his feet. Now we just need to do just a little bit of um, logic here. So we're going to say if the ground is not null, which means there is ground there. Let's return true. And else, if anything else is happening, which means if we're not touching the ground, let's return false. And so because I've returned true and returned false, that's the last thing that we can we need to do in these kinds of methods. I can press compile, and we should be all good. Now, I can't really just call on ground in the act method because it, all it does is figure out if we're touching the ground or not. So we need to create one more method. And I like to put my methods in order, like in the program, so it kind of makes sense. So I actually need to see, should I fall? And if I should fall, let's fall here. And while I'm falling, I need to check to see if I'm on the ground. So I'm going to put another method right in between here. And let's, this one's going to check to see if we should fall. So I'm going to say public void check fall. And again, make sure you put in your curly braces. All your methods should have this yellow kind of color around it. So now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, um, are we on the ground? And I can use this method to check to see if I'm on the ground. So I can say if on the ground, if I run that method and it is true, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that the vertical speed should be zero. So if he's on the ground, don't make him move vertically. If he's not on the ground, again, which would be a else, let's make him fall. And now just a couple quick things before we check this out. On ground, putting this in this if method says, if I run this method and the method is true, do this. All right. And then where I put else and I put fall, 
wherever I put fall like this, that's the same as putting this code underneath that else. So this is just kind of a way to stay organized. So now to make sure that this all works and to try it out, let's call check fall in the act. And we don't need to call the other ones because they're called within the other methods. So let's press compile. Let's put a player on the screen and press run. So my player kind of falls down and when he hits the ground, he stops. So let's try it again. This time, let's put our player not above some ground and he should just keep falling forever. And that's great. Now our player, he doesn't really fall. He kind of just floats like that. So let's add just one more line of code here or edit a line of code just to make this a little bit more realistic. Let's go to the player class and in fall, let's change this right here. So let's just add some acceleration to his falling. So let's make V speed equal V speed plus gravity. So the gravity is going to get like he's going to move faster the longer he falls. So let's press compile. Let's try this. And now we should have a better fall. Now, if you check it out here, my player is actually stuck in the ground. And in another video, we'll talk about how to fix that.